what are the different kinds of things? Just a list of things you can possibly put in a portfolio. Object drawing, right? Still life, uh, different of different textures, materials, light and shade effects, compositional skills, media study of <coughs> an object, all these other things you can put. Nature study of human, animal. When I say study, I'm not talking about just one leaf you have drawn, maybe, but ten leaves or the same leaf in from different directions. Okay? So study. In various mediums, so you can do the same leaf in pencil color. Pencil color, you can do it in acrylic, you can do it in watercolors. So that is known as a study. You are going in there. Portraits, different kinds of portraits. Mediums, landscapes. You can put abstract compositions. Abstract is there is no particular shape. Now, usually is able to uh, put for a while. So abstract is not just any abstract, but an abstract which can actually communicate something would be better. Line drawings and doodles. Sometimes you know you feel that small little sketch I made at the back of my math book is like really nice. Then cut it off, take a picture, and put it up. Or you can even if it has got writing and other stuff around it, does not matter. But you can show that you are a person who actually doodles, you know, the inspiration can strike any time, right? You can put caricatures. Animated characters, storyboards, small comic strips which you have created, flip books. You know what are flip books? Animators use them. So, like you know, you can have a it's a book where you draw hundreds of the same drawing with small changes in the movement, and you flip it seems like the uh, the movement is actually happening. So you can check out flip books, play models, stop motion animation. Stop motion animation is like a very interesting where you make like like you can make animation with a pen and with this remote. So the remote is jumping over the pen. So you are shooting them at these stages. And then you combine them and then you fast forward the read. So it looks like it's moving. So you can create stories like that. There are a lot of YouTube uh, videos which will show you how to do all these things. But the point is not just to do anything, but have an idea or a story which is yours. And then use materials which are around you and build something like that. Problem solving, product design concepts. Which is, a, I think, probably a little more difficult. Maybe you have done some in the class, and, uh, and your teacher told you that it is good. Then you modify, refine, and make it better. But problem solving is like if you are facing a problem with your water bottle or with anything which you are using in your daily life, you can think about how I can improve on that product and come up with ideas. Then uh, exercises reflecting understanding of uh, understanding of and use of color. So play around with color. Those of you who like color, okay? Play around. How does brown look with magenta? Which shade of magenta looks better with color? With brown? With which shade of brown? So you can play around, create patterns, uh, color them in different ways. See if, uh, if you're able to. Suppose say I ask you to design a fabric which represents Goa. What are the colors you're going to use? So try to or spicy food. What are the colors you're going to use in that pack? What uh, motifs would you use, and what colors would you use to make that? Fabric seem like you know it is inspired from the spices. So you take a idea like that and work on colors, and that can be a piece of work in your portfolio. If you like to draw, you can also do a study of perspective. We have done a lot of perspective this year in the classes. So you can, I think all of you are pretty good at it now. So you can uh, do the same object from different perspectives, and that can be a study. So Three tough activities like chalk carving, jewelry making, metal embossing, flower making, origami, carpentry work, 3D paper work, wire model, paper mache, anything you can build with waste material around the house. Pick up 10 items and see what you can do with it in the house. Okay, and uh, have a concept. Think about what, uh, decor items are the easiest, wall decors are the easiest. You can build a few of those. You can build stands, pen stands, and stuff like that. You can build uh, keychains, you know, a lot of things, posters, fridge magnets from waste material. And if you can relate it to some concepts which are happening, some social issues which are happening around you, even better. Embroidery or stitched bags, apparel, clothing, or bags, or anything which you can stitch, you can hand stitch, you can stitch also. You don't have to necessarily sit and stitch those clothes. You can get it stitched by a tailor, but the idea has to be yours. Everything, all the detailing, everything. He's only doing the stitching part. That is fine. Okay, and uh, self painted shoes, you can paint bed sheets, bags, anything you can lay your hands on. 
or you have a table at home, paint it. You have a cold cover, do some uh, decoupage. Decoupage is like a stick paper and then cover it with what they call it varnish. So you can do a lot of interesting things with things which are old and useless which are lying around in your house. And of course the upcycling project which we did you know? So you pick up your old clothes, four or five clothes and see what you can make out of it. Or anything which you are discarding, which is in reasonably good condition, see what else you can do with it. So those kind of projects are quite interesting for the portfolio. Yeah, and medium of expression can be, like I said, pencil, bottle color, or paper, anything. Okay, so are you getting some ideas as to what all you can do? Now, how do you make your portfolio strong? What your portfolio should have is originality and creativity. That means you are not copying stuff from the internet. Because if you have seen it on the internet, I'm sure, even the examiners, you can be sure the examiners have also seen it. So you know how to come up with a good creative idea of your own. You don't have to copy. You can be inspired, yes. You can take ideas in terms of skills and how many those have been used. But something of that has to be your own. You have to make it something which means something to you. Okay, convert it into something which means. Show your skill. Show range. Range, when you are talking about range, is the variety of things you are able to do. And ambition. When we say ambition, it means uh, your desire to do and complete certain projects. Okay, so you started something and maybe your ability to get orders or to perform other All that comes like you designing this for yourself, creating a brand logo for yourself because in the future you are seeing a brand. Uh, which is yours. Okay, that is ambition, right? So, stuff like that you can also put in your portfolio. Okay, now um, Colors and scale to make your work stand out like so this portfolio very creatively. And most importantly, your strength. Figure out what are you sketching, highlight on that. If you're good at typography, highlight on that. So whatever you're good at, figure that out and highlight that. And it's also good to have one piece in your portfolio which is actually This work which the uh, examiners are looking at and they say, oh wow, and that seems to be virtually. So if you can, uh, all is like just secondary in that case. If you have one piece which can stand out, which is unique, you have put in a lot of effort and the pages of your portfolio because it is that detailed. You put in a lot of effort into it. It's your main project. And that is like a thing, then that is enough. You don't need to have too much stuff. <coughs> Now the size portfolio also asks for statement of purpose. Sometimes in video format, you just have to simply answer. But in general, the, the, the statement of purpose has to basically talk out.
accountants. Accountants, you can maintain accounts in a company. You can file tax returns and stuff like that. So, what do you learn in design? What do you need to learn? Lift is easy to come under me. Lift, what do you learn? Fashion management. You will learn cutting, stitching, lifting. You will learn about the history of fashion. You will learn how to forecast fashion. You will learn about color. You will learn about the traditional arts and crafts of India. Right?
and why are you a good fit? These are difficult questions, but you need to figure out answers for them. Why do you want to study communication design? Um, communication design because it, uh, I will say that uh, I feel the need to be able to. Uh, I have always been a person to communicate visually more than through speech or through text. Or you could be like, uh, you know, I'm, through visual, uh, visual communication is a very powerful means of reaching the masses. You know, Hitler virtually brought in the Nazi rule just because of propaganda. You know, propaganda, a lot of posters, announcements, communication happening um, in that community. Modi won the elections because of propaganda. That kind of media publicity, media, um, the, the reach he had and the things he said. Uh, which was, do you remember the green part of the media, right? So you can do education. So you have to know why you are getting into a particular field. Similarly, what do you do? Do very once you have it. Like you start your own, you are going to work in a company, you have a long term work. Is what makes you a little bit for a This is a fashion design. And you know, like the sketches are not great, but the person is still um, scored pretty well because see how that person has actually tried to make it make the dress in that particular way with fabric so that it shows that. Thank <laughs> you. 